What's happening Facebook fam, Mike here from Hammer Fitness, bringing you a really important topic once again. Uh, today's topic is on meditation and one of the most crucial things that happens in meditation that I don't think a lot of people realize uh, because I think it's taken, taken for granted and the stigma around meditation, it's almost like it's turning into a fad or a trend almost like it's fashionable like people are doing it because now that's kind of what you do and without actually having a proper understanding on the power and potential of meditation if you don't want to kind of flow with the stream of what everyone else is doing uh, because you don't want to get caught up in the rat race like we already are um, then you may choose not to do it and you're probably and most likely missing out on the hidden potential that meditation carries now it's obviously going to be up to you to decide whether or not you want to meditate but first things first like always knowledge yourself and start learning about what it is to meditate and then from that you can make a mature decision for yourself to see if you actually want to implement meditation into your life now there's a lot of reasons why uh, I meditate and why I think a lot of others should meditate one of the main reasons though uh, coming to the frontal cortex of the brain is there's a network in the brain called uh, the default mode networks and it's essentially run by our, by our subconscious mind now everything that's happened throughout your entire life is actually starting to piece together this uh, default mode network or DMA I'm gonna call it for short and that is essentially your brain's way of becoming more and more efficient uh, as you grow. Now, if you could imagine, <clears throat> if we were con as confused as children, we'd be quite frustrated all day. As soon as we piece something together or have a realization about something, essentially that's like uh, two neurals, uh, neurological circuits coming together and then that's a link formed. And as we grow up from child to adolescence, we're forming all these pieces to a puzzle essentially. And how we choose to do things throughout our entire life uh, is forming this DMA. Now, as we get into our adult stages, whatever we've learned, it's almost become concrete. Because our brain is all about efficiency and the human body is about survival, it's gonna make everything a really quick process and it's gonna become the most efficient and effective tool. So essentially it's trying to group things together. So essentially your whole day is run on autopilot and it is really difficult to get out of that autopilot. So for example, when you go into meditation, this DMA is actually reduced significantly. So if you feel an emotion when you're uh, going about your day, usually what's going to happen is you don't have time to think about it, but, but it's gonna come up anyway, all right? Things are gonna happen and you're gonna get triggered in certain ways to feel certain things, but because of the rush of the day, we're all so consumed in this rat race that we have to try and manage that on the fly. All right? That could mean disorders, any type of uh, wall building in terms of insecurities, uh, things that we could do that'll get, a, get us away from that situation, like either having a cigarette or certain forms of OCD, like I've actually got myself uh, that I've actually become aware of that I bring up, so tapping or counting, and there's heaps of different forms of OCD. But you're essentially throwing up these protective mechanisms while you're going through fighting your way through the day. Now imagine this, you stop for 5, 10, maybe even 15 minutes, sit down, chill out, and go into a meditative place. Now, for a lot of people, this is going to be very difficult because one, it's not done very often, and two, it's really hard to actually go internal. Uh, it is one of the most confronting things because all of that stuff that you um, come into grips with in the day is going to show up and you've actually got time to sort it out. Now that is a good and a bad thing. It's a blessing and a curse because they're gonna come up whether you like it or not, but now you've actually got time or that space uh, to actually figure out what's going on and to think about it. All right, so the biggest tool uh, for this is meditation. You can just sit down, slightly turn down your DMA or the default mode network. So instead you can start uh, programming different circuits in your brain to think in different ways so you can actually choose how to think about certain emotions and just have time to yourself okay this is why sometimes meditation is so relaxing because 
your brain isn't getting run on autopilot and it's not going to the quickest and easiest reaction that you would normally go to uh, while you're doing your normal day activities. I hope this really makes sense, guys. The best way to jump into some meditation, honestly, don't jump into it um, as deep as you can first. Don't think I'm gonna meditate half an hour every day. Take your time with it. Find a space that's nice and quiet and comfortable, okay? Um, and try not to do it in a place that's associated with uh, pain or any work. Like, really try to get out and about. I mean, nature is even better if you can go do it on the grass, at the beach, somewhere nice and comfortable, relaxing, something you can associate comfort, uh, comfort and pleasure with. That'd be even better. So, just start off with five minutes. That's all I ask or even 10 minutes, uh, not long at all. But essentially, this is like the psychological training equivalent to the physical training in a gym. All right, it really is, and I really urge you to try uh, because it has helped me wonders. All right, so I started off meditating pretty much every day, and it's kind of taken me to a place that I can keep going back to. So I can essentially draw that place I can go to with my meditation and pull it into my day to just make my day a lot easier. And when I find that things get like too much, then I can just utilize it as a tool because essentially that's all it is. It's just a tool. Uh, it's not going to be the be all end all. Uh, one thing you got to be aware of is don't get too addicted. You can't use it all the time because essentially that's also something that's going to become an automated process. It's just a thing you do, but essentially only use it when uh, you need to. Uh, that in itself is telling you how powerful meditation is, but you've just got to let it happen uh, and just let go of all that stigma around meditation because everyone else is doing it. All right, so I really urge you uh, to try it out and please let me know how you go because it is one of the most powerful tools we can use to train and enhance our uh, psychological friend up here uh, which is pretty much who we're at war with really uh, and as soon as we can control internal we're going to have a lot less external problems till the next video guys peace out for now